Hello, good evening, everyone, and welcome to our November Astro Chat with the Astronomical Society of Penang. Actually, uh, I was going to say that welcome to What's Up in the Sky uh, <laughs> for good reason, right? Because today we are interviewing Mr. Hafiz Wurza, who's the founder of Appa Di Langit, which is, of course, What's Up in the Sky. <laughs> okay, but uh, before we, we begin, okay, uh, let, let me actually just share really quickly about something with the uh, Astronomical Society of Penang. Okay, uh, so please bear with me. Let me just uh, share. So our Astronomical Society of Penang, we have a YouTube site now and we have a Facebook site, of course. And there is, of course, this uh, Astronomical Society of Penang.com website. Okay, uh, please uh, visit the website and of course, uh, yes, I'll be hosting a night sky imaging workshop. Please join if you have the time. Uh, we certainly hope to see you there. Uh, I'll share some things, uh, a lot of things about uh, how to image and uh, some, some tips that I see from uh, looking at multiple astrophotos. Okay, and uh, there's news articles about space. Uh, our uh, super producer, Mr. Michael Theo here. Okay, and then there's also uh, what's up in the sky. Okay, and the uh, calendar that you can download, etc. Some pretty pictures by our members in a members gallery. Very nice stuff. So, okay, and uh, I'm going to come back to the screen right now. Okay, so uh, sorry to keep you waiting, uh, Hafiz, uh, but uh, we are so honored to have you today. So, Hafiz Murza. Uh, is the founder of Appa Di Langit in Malaysia. I would consider him a space entrepreneur of Malaysia. And uh, he has a background uh, education from uh, international, uh, sorry, the uh, Islamic, uh, sorry, what's that? The Islamic University? Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, I got lost in the... In, international uh, Islamic University. <laughs> international Islamic University. I'm sorry, I got lost it's in okay. my notes here. It's yeah. Okay. okay, and then uh, he is doing work with the IAU, and uh, I think that what's very interesting is uh, you're the national coordinator for Astronomy Without Borders for Malaysia. Okay, so uh, and a lot more, a lot of a lot of things. Okay, uh, doing Pico satellites, um, uh, attending sim symposiums in astronomy for e equity everywhere. Okay, so um, and and oh, okay, even came to Bangkok uh, in 2017 for the uh, International Training Center of Astronomy, uh, science, okay, science, technology, uh, engineering, and math for astronomy, okay? So, uh, uh, um, very, very active member of the astronomy community in Malaysia. So, good evening, Mr. Hafiz. Welcome to our show. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule. Okay. Thank you for inviting me tonight. I mean, I'm honored to be in your program. It's my pleasure to join with you and to share what I have. Yes, we, we also have a great pleasure of having you. So um, I think that uh, we'll, uh, we have a lot of stuff to talk about tonight. But uh, I think first, like I always want to start off is uh, let's, let's uh, kind of find out more about you, especially your background in astronomy, right, Hafiz? So can you tell us a little bit about how you got interested in astronomy, how you got started? All right. Thank you, Doctor. Um, okay. Uh, for a start, um, I'm not the professional astronomers, right? So I'm an amateur. Uh, so basically, I'm studying in uh, political science. Yeah, I go through politics, learn about politics, and then I do learn about finance as well. Um, and then uh, my interest in astronomy start when I was in uh, primary school. It starts there. I love to look at the sky, and I also like to play with the math book. I mean, if you remember the mathematic book have like a square, right? So I like the concept of space and time. So I draw space and time a lot. Yeah, wow, I mean, like physics. And yeah. I love physics so much. And I have um, my nickname also physics. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but with okay. different uh, with different spellings. 
yeah oh, okay yeah so <laughs> i i do i become like uh, during that time i become like a reference for physics uh and then um why i choose political science because i have something in my mind that if i want to change the world that time i need to go through politics anyway <laughs> yeah that time okay, that that's moment. a very that's a yeah, very good thought yeah yeah okay. i think um if i want to change uh, to unite people to go to the certain cause i mean to grow science and to make science i mean become a global uh, agenda so I, i think that moment where i can see a lot of scientists didn't work on it so i think oh so i need to position myself in the political arena but then when i go through and then find out that wow a lot of things that happen in politics and then i can't bear with it <laughs> and i can't put my face on it so yeah i do play around with it but then i learn some lesson but it give me a lot of thing to think uh it's not just about the political thing but it allow me to learn how to present myself to the public how to go and get networking that's the thing that i appreciate so much yeah i have like a science uh, uh part and also i like the human part the way the most but the political people goes so i, I think it's important to uh, match that and, and also to combine it together so uh because we are human right yeah science is one thing that's important how we can explain about what nature tells us but politics and i mean human part tell us i mean this is human thing that we uh, deal with it every day so how to simplify it that the, yes. the thing that i like so much we have a lot of jargon out there came out with by the scientists and astronomers and then how to communicate back to the public yes. and how to make the public feel that they are a part of it that that i think the 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 best thing that i, I have Wow, so so I I think I do have a few things I should learn from you here. Yeah, I could. So I'll I'll, I'll ask you <laughs> in the future. If you don't mind, okay? It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. It's, a, it's, yeah. it's it's very important. I think scientific communications. You know, you look at people from Carl Sagan down to now Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh, yeah. What's that guy? Bill Nye, the science Bill guy, Nye. and everything. Yeah. Indeed. All all these people. They are all terrific science. Communicators and they 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 do come across very effectively in passing this passing through science. But but so can can you tell us a little bit then about your science background? Did you did you pursue something on the side or just you know decide that okay I'll be amateur good enough and uh, you know but I understand the basics and then I can communicate it? Is that kind of your approach then? Okay, I do have basic of science and I I do I know about coding a little bit. And that's why we came out with the um, devices where we uh, replicate back the device of the sound, light sound device, light sound device where we uh, uh, transform light into sound, right? So uh, that one uh, initially uh, from the uh, Argentina, from the IAU, where I think I still remember where that uh, now Tansri, right? Tun, Tan Sri, Tan Sri, Dr. Madlan Osman oh, uh, yeah. requests me to produce the device for Malaysia during the uh, Tanjung Pi, uh, Sol, uh, Tanjung Pi solar eclipse. So, and we have a grant uh, in support by the uh, International Science um, Council, and uh, so I produce about five devices. For the light device and that one, I mean coordination and also coding and stuff, turn light into sound. But the device is not fully utilized right now, so we are still doing something with it. And internationally, uh, we have uh, like a sonification uh, education, how uh, in the uh, equity and diversity group. So we are exploring the device, so everybody can uh, get benefit from it. That's a good oh, thing that we will know about the how uh, to sonify things, uh, the yeah. light especially. So we help uh, blind people or visual impaired people to know about our sky, and then also to give us another experience. I mean, sense uh, when we look at the sky, we can hear or the difference of the tone because everything yeah. can be translated. Okay, I, I I think I know your project because I actually. Participated in a survey 
you know mm. i saw it on on facebook or some or online somewhere i don't know let's click it and then it's like this scanner right that scans through the image and then as it scan through it detect the color the yeah. red color is lower tone and the blue color higher frequency will be higher tone right? yeah but then it kind of plays up this whole ding, 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 you know sound yes. music. it's like wow fantastic you know and that one is a part of it but what we right. did that day is mm-hmm. a device where we i mean put it under the sun and it can detect the brightness of the sun and when the eclipse happened you can see the light dimmer and dim and dim oh. right so the sound is totally wow. different you can imagine that time normally what happened when we go and watch eclipse everybody just look at it and shouting i mean wow it's happening but then now we have like a background sound actually initially come from the sun uh light translated into the sound and uh it affect everybody it feel like well very i think like in a movie with the background and with the music it's not just mm-hmm. about what we are when I mean, we are shocked and happy to look at this, uh eclipse it's just totally I, th- i think it is a great uh, experience where that time that i still remember when dr mazlan asked me to make it public to everyone about five five 5000 people at the time at the tanjung pi so we make it uh everybody can hear it uh, okay so you can you can feel it i mean you can when you look at the sun being obscured by the moon and suddenly the sound also become different and different i mean we can dimmer uh, go a deep and deep and deep uh it can see in that time the blind visually impaired people can understand oh that's how it look like so mm-hmm. that i think that one is among the best experience that i have uh to to share about um the beauty of sky space yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's fascinating like people I mean, like it, right <laughs> now now you make me wish i went there i forgot what happened and i couldn't make it uh-huh. maybe, I just, uh, maybe i was just lazy yeah it, 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 <laughs> i was it, it, up north in Shibai, TV, I mean, was it yeah. 2019 was that eclipse in 2019 was it yeah uh, end of december 23 of december of 2019 oh uh, i already moved here <laughs> yeah <laughs> i have a good excuse <laughs> ah. <laughs> save myself there <laughs> okay <laughs> so so okay and uh, i i think that uh that that's that's Totally cool. But is that after you formed uh, right. Upper Dilangit? Okay. Initially, Upper Dilangit was from six years ago. Okay. Uh, I met Hazim, uh, my best friend, um, seven years ago. So before I, I came out with Upper Dilangit, uh, we just started a club, a simple astronomy club. I mean, not official one. If we go through the WhatsApp group, I mean, we, we get the people who like astronomy from, I mean, young people. So then um, I came out. I go through. Uh, I I came up with an idea that we need to have a proper and uh, I think uh, a proper and systematic uh, astronomy education in for public. For mm. actually, that time, even though we have a planetarium, but then for uh, like uh, people like us, I mean, for the public, don't have like uh, others to refer to refer mostly from our generation, right? So I think we need to have a proper one. And that time I go and meet a lot of people. Uh, and and at that time I also know about Universe Awareness. Uh, Universe Awareness is a mm. program under Leiden University and also uh, supported by the UNESCO. So I go and join them together. And now um, Upper Delang is a part of Universe Awareness. So at that time I show my plan to Hazim and for him is totally new thing and it's quite surprising that he didn't understand it and it takes few time for him i mean i need to explain him few time that this is what what i'm going to do and how we can i can say how we can monetize it to make sure that we can live with astronomy right, right. and not rely i mean it's not easy to become an astronomer i mean you need to go through certain level and you need to study yeah that's fine but then we have our patient here to go and to share to the public So we need to come up with our own strategy. From there, after that, Hazim goes to further his studies, um, and and I'm at that time I already working as a consultant uh, with YTL. So at that moment, uh, and um, I go through my plan, and during that time, every weekend I start with my own class. Yeah, from 10 people to become 70, become hundreds every week. It's full. Wow. Okay. Yeah. 
and, and then I can see where uh, we came up with the um, supply. Actually, they have a demand where people, parents come and ask us, my kids like astronomy, my kids like space, my kids know about a uh, black hole, but we don't know how to explain. Then I know oh, something I'm missing here. Mm. It's a gap where the as professional and amateur mostly talk about a uh, big thing within their age. You can look at us, our Facebook page. Most of our friends in our Facebook page are from the age, like, I mean, to 25 above, where the younger are no, not there. So they don't have a reference, I mean, to refer to and to talk about astronomy, to talk about space. So there's a gap that I think, wow, I need to fit in and I need to feel uh, what they want to know. So it helped me to grow. It helped Upper Langit to grow. And then after Hazim finished, his, uh, I graduated from his studies and he joined me uh, full time. And then uh, for almost half year, suddenly the COVID-19 comes. <laughs> oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. But then, um, I, I think we we don't wait too long to to evolve to I, I to 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 move because uh, I think we go fast and we change everything into online, and we still have a lot of I mean, uh, participants who participate, kids participate and joining us every week, you know, with our classes, and uh, we have a lot of uh, schools joining us uh every week as well so that's how we start just a humble start uh and i, I think a lot of things happen during the moment i mean now it's about five years of upper delangit a lot of things happen up and down i think it's not easy but i appreciate all the experience even though uh yeah i need to do it alone i need to i, I think i stretch myself a lot not, nothing is easy, but that's why I think that uh, you know, there's a we learn. We I think this interview here is meant to kind of like, first of all, recognize that Upper Dilangit is has a value, and then number two is like, you know, we we see that ah, there's a lot of hard work put in here to push astronomy, astronomy education, educating the public. Um, can we learn from you? And is there an example that we can do? And also there are probably teachers or people that who would eventually watch this, or if not watching right now, okay, that will eventually say that, hey, you know, we can get uh, Upper Dilangit to help, you know, teach and things like that. So I, I think that uh, that is why we want to kind of like push this. And, and it is certainly a space that in the education system that, you know, uh, it's, it's, it seems like it's missing. And so, so can you tell me more about then Apa di Langit? Like, uh, you, you said you have a slideshow or something that. Uh, oh yeah, I do have something right. to share. I mean, there's a. Yeah, can you can you share it really? Share. Yeah, yeah, really quickly, and uh, let's, right. let's have a look. Yeah. Okay, it's quite a nostalgic slide actually, but then I'm happy to share with you guys. Uh, yeah, this is Apa di Langit. Um, Inspiring every Malaysian generation with our wonderful cosmos. That's our uh, motto, actually. Wow. First, I'm attracted to that telescope right there. That's a <laughs> uh, yeah. Really yeah, that one is actually uh, the planetarium telescope. Oh, oh planetarium. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, oh, this, yeah. That, that's a planetarium where we do a lot of class in planetarium initially. Okay. So we utilize the facilities in the planetarium almost every week. And we have uh, participants from all Malaysian. Some of them coming from Kedas, coming from Penang, just to attend our program for one day event. Wow. Yeah, I can That's see a lot cool. of, I mean, brilliant kids who really want to learn about space. I mean, I have a lot of videos when I ask something, everybody want to, uh, everybody raise up their hand and want to answer it. I, I think oh. curiosity wow. among kids is super, I mean, awesome. And it, yes. it, I, we are missing something after that. I mean, the curiosity decrease. So that gap, then we need to discuss that on. But then what we can do right now to spark more interest, I mean, to f help them to believe and to understand about space. And but because at the end of the day, when they like about space, about astronomy, parents will all ask, okay, what is the future in astronomy? Yes. 
<laughs> yes. yeah, that's why I participate. I am involved in the space industry in Malaysia. It's, mm. it's also trying to build the ecosystem for Malaysian future space future. Okay. Yeah. So let me share my slide. Okay. Initially, okay. this is my first time sharing with you guys the logos of Upper the Langit. Initial wow. logo of Upper the Langit. Thank you. <laughs> wow, that's an honor. Yeah. That's, so that's the first logo. I use it. Uh, if you notice know, in 2016, 2015, I'm the only one who used this logo. So this is my first time I'm sharing with everybody here. Uh, this is the logo of Upper the Langit. And I came up with the idea. I, Actually, I don't have um, how I came up with the Upper the Langit name when um, is initially it is space generation before Upper the Langit. And then I think, oh, I need to have a Malaysian name. What is a catchy name that shows curiosity? You should start with something like the questions. So I came up with Upper. And then, then it come uh, directly I need to put di langit lah. I mean, asking what in the sky, right? I mean, something that you ask. Sky, yes. And so I make it like a, uh, my brand, Apa di langit. Yeah, it's a process when when you think about what is the, what is the base name, what is the base name to give to the uh, project. So I'm wondering if our producer steal the name from you and please don't steal <laughs> us for copyright issue. <laughs> Okay. Then, uh, okay, that's okay. me and my my co-founder uh, Hazim. Uh, hope he will join us today. But then, uh, this is my first time explaining to him. Um, in March twenty twenty, uh, March twenty second, on July the time when he just started his uh a degree in Usim. Right, so actually, that time I the first time I explained to him about a like it, how you gonna, uh, what is my ideas, how we're gonna move from it, and I'm I'm lucky that he believed, even though he didn't understand initially, but then he joined uh the wow. team, yeah, and then uh, at the same time that year we traveled together to chase the Palembang total total solar eclipse, yeah, that's the first time we joined, and so that time I'm already used the upper Langit name. Oh. And this is my photos with the International Training Center of Astronomy. And then this is where uh, I present in Communicating Astronomy for Public. with a poster presentation about the project that I've done with Malaysian during the eclipse. During this eclipse, at uh, that time, um, I promote to Malaysian schools. That time, uh, if you guys remember, we have a system where our education ministry use for uh, kids to learn they have a, like a vle virtual learning environment a platform and i asked all the schools of malaysia to do something and i about the eclipse that time i still remember not uh, much publicity about the uh, partial solar eclipse and i urge all schools to participate and i have about five thousand participation for all around malaysia and I came out with the paper and then I, I present it here in the communication of something for public. So, yeah, we have a post uh, uh, during and uh, before, uh, during and post event, um, I think, uh, project for that. I mean, yeah, that's awesome where some schools that time, they have examination and then they call me and thanks for the information. We postponed the exam just to allow our kids to student to look and to watch the eclipse that's the okay, best that's uh, news that is i that, have is that emma too is that or? yeah that's emma and also oh. tini is there and dr yeah. saifu is oh. there all oh, right yeah. Tini. yeah i see yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> all right and then at, this, at the same time i was ah. invited <laughs> to jaksa to visit the tanagishima and this this um i think this one is my best experience when i travel alone in japan with nobody in country where nobody uh, i mean speak english in this area i mean mostly uh i've been alone there um and luckily i get support from uh some of the malaysian uh prominent people who give uh donation something because the jaksa invite but they don't give money <laughs> uh, okay. yeah i need to go i to reroute my flight 
And then I still remember uh, alone, everything walk about 10 kilometers. Uh, wow. And then, yeah, just to get here. And we have a group. I mean, I meet all international people who actually also invited. So we joined them uh, so for a tour to the uh, Tanagashima Space Center where I say this is the closest place for Japan to the space because they launched their uh, rocket from the Tanagashima. Well worth, right. uh, well worth the the 10 kilometer walk for the self yeah yeah it, it, <laughs> more than that i mean uh yeah i mean for me for me it's the first time i'm traveled alone yeah in mm. japan it can what you can expect <laughs> right? right yeah right. It, it is a worthy experience and I, I i hope i can do that again and then later after next year um actually in between of this uh, Upper Delangit was granted a grant from the IAU, so we came up with the uh, device uh, impact dome, we call it you know, impact dome, where we produce a spherical, a spherical sky for blind people to learn about uh, uh, star chart. So they will be stand under the uh, dome and they can touch the dome and they can learn about the constellation. I will show the mm. photos and so on. Wow. So then after uh, that one, I was grant it's a project by Upper Delangit and also with the uh, university from Indonesia. We collaborate together. So because of that, we was invited to IAU Astronomy of Equity and Diversity Inclusion in Japan in 2019, November. Yeah, so we learn a lot about uh, equity, diversity, and inclusion, and th that's why from now I'm also a uh, working group in this uh, division here. Uh, all right. So yeah, me and Hazim here we visited um, Scuba, uh, where there's a JAXA HQ, and we go through all the facilities, and that's amazing. And that's so the is that a real rocket replica? Yeah, that's a real rocket H2A. Wow. Okay. <laughs> real rocket H2A. And luckily, when uh, in the symposium, it, it, uh, the symposium is happened in Nauji National Observatory, uh, National Astronomical Observatory of Japan, the Mitaka. So we also go, I mean, uh, walk around the Mitaka Center, go to all the observatories and learn about the telescopes and everything. Wow, that's amazing where we have like a big institution for astronomy in Japan, uh, Nauji. And now Upper Langit is closely working together with Nauji. We have a project, I think we haven't yet announced the result, but then we achieve what we are target for. Nice. All right, so then uh, we also participate in National Astronomy Workshop for Teachers. This one invited by Datuk Mazlan. Oh. Uh, okay, you can see a lot, a lot, a lot of uh, prominent faces there. Uh, some of them from uh, the Mel Gibb is there. Uh, yeah, uh, the Professor Agatha is there from Nauji. Uh, and then uh, Professor Mazlan, I forget his name. Mm. And numbers from oh, in and also narrate as well. So okay. that's how we oh, expect. Narrate, yes. Yeah, narrate also. Yeah, and then uh, behind this photo, you can see that is the dome that I told you just now. Oh, the impact uh, dome. Okay. Blind people, right? Yeah, for blind people. Uh, so this is yes. why the previous uh, IAU president. Uh, we have a new one, latest one. So this one is Dr. Win Von uh, uh together with us in Japan. And this one, when we collaborated with a U.S. Embassy and also um, Malaysia, uh, University of Malaysia, Kelantan, where we, uh, as you know, we also provide telescope for institution and also public. Okay. So, yeah, this is how we collaborate with U.S. Embassy. Moon landing. Moon landing. Yeah, moon landing event. Moon landing event. Okay. Okay. And then... Um, this is Universal Awareness Malaysia, uh, but like also known as Universal Awareness Malaysia. So, yeah, uh, that's me, the National Program Coordinator for Universal Awareness. We have about 70 countries around the world, uh, and we have uh, Universal Awareness. Uh, we have the uh, modules, we have uh, connect, uh, connections, how to share knowledge about space and astronomy for kids uh, with the model, uh, modules, and also we have a lot of discussion. Uh, I attended the meeting in Kagoshima University 
for universe awareness purposely. Oh, Kagoshima, that's the island where it's like really dark, is it? Hey, uh, yeah, <laughs> the Kagoshima University, the, the southest, uh, I think, southest uh, state in Kyushu Island, right? Before we go to Tanagishima, there's a Kagoshima. Okay. Uh, I learned uh, a lot of history there where the Meiji Revolution starts from there. It's a good place, actually. Uh, right, to okay. learn about the modernization of Japan. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So, yeah, currently we have 70 actually countries participate wow. for the UNAWE Universal Awareness. So, we are around the globe. So, Malaysian uh, is conducted by Upper the Langit. All right. So, yeah, um, just to recap that we, what we have done uh, with Malaysian that we also... Um, co-organized the name exo world if you remember malaysia has given a, a, a exoplanet and also a star all right mm. to be named so uh, that's me with charles bolden if you remember okay. <laughs> yeah charles bolden ex-director of Na nasa ah, okay, we, right. yeah, yeah. Uh, together with point anita uh, the director of national planetarium yeah. and also uh, tuan haji azli now he is the director uh the what we call it the general director dg the director general for the mysa right now oh yeah. okay okay so they are big people with uh together on the stage okay so <laughs> i'm a smallest one uh, and uh this is star that been given a name uh Inter and Baduri, so we are happy to I mean, to share with the Malaysian that we uh, co-organized this with the Planetary Negara because at that time, I'm the, I'm the one who connect with IAU mm. uh, to organize this event in Malaysia. All right, so this was uh, me in Tanjung Pi when we I share about the device. I didn't put the device. Uh, yeah, you can see in the TV there, that one, the black mm. device on the table. Yeah, that is the oh, light okay. on device. Oh. Okay, right. yeah, that one is the light sound device. So when this one is TV, national TV station callers for interview. TV, TV satu. <laughs> yeah, TV satu. Yeah. So they call us to explain about uh, the device and the experience. Uh, but when looking at the eclipse and also turn it into a sound, wow, that is an amazing experience. All right, okay. So a little bit about apa di langit. Actually, Upper Langit, as um, Dr. Derek mentioned just now, Upper Langit is uh, a brand, education, space education brand uh, for a company, a startup. Uh, the company is Langit Tinggi. Soon, um, I hope we will change it into Langit Kita. Okay, Langit Kita, so... Uh, uh, Langit Kita. Yeah, Langit Kita. Um, so, Ayumi Hazim will be, uh, I think, uh, we will lead uh, the company together and um, inside Upper the Langit we have a lot of activities, uh, camp, astronomical camp, uh, we have for every stage from kindergarten, primary, secondary, public and we have for the inclusive people and we have for public observation as well. So before the COVID-19 we are very active and now we are already preparing ourselves to go out again uh, and to meet public um, and yeah that, that uh the event the, the program and we also have like online um education modules for malaysian in basa malaysia we have upper the at home this one have been announced by the iau uh mm -hmm. i mean the, we have a syllabus for this so our kids are using it for education. We track everything. People download it. People, our kids using it. School using it. Right? Okay. And we also have our community as well, uh, where we gather people who are interested in astronomy and space, uh, where we have astronomy upper the language volunteers, and we have a numbers of volunteers from every, I mean, level, uh, professional, kids, students, uh, graduates. Uh, I mean, even the top, top people who are active in um, technology, in space, uh, technology also participate as a volunteers. And we have Apadilangit stargazers, those who bought a telescope from us. 
So we have a group for them. We have about hundreds um, telescopes. Uh, I mean, users they bought from Upper Langit. We give them free classes every month. We have like uh, meetings uh, together, and we hope that after this COVID ended and we can meet together, we can have a big, uh, I mean, star event where everybody can come with their own telescope and we have a, I mean, star party, <laughs> that kind of things. Wow. Yeah, right? that's very nice. Yeah. yeah, we already have the community for that. I mean, it's, even though it's scattered around Malaysia, but then we can get, I think we can get people to come in and people get to join for the party, star party. And then wow. we have the Upper Langit Space Explorer where we have kids who joining us uh, and to proceed learn about uh, astronomy and space technology. So mm-hmm. we have this uh, community because we are not a club because right. we are, we, we run up the Langit as a professional and uh, as a, uh, as you can say, like a, a company, right? And then right. Um, right. at the moment we also uh, have uh, work, I mean, I think graduates who work from for us, we pay them a salary, uh, mm. Yeah, and we not just uh, pay them a salary, we also upgrade them with the pedagogy of uh, teaching kids how to mm. deal with kids, how to, I mean, to simplify terms and uh, to make sure that our kids understand what uh, we are trying to say. I mean, the complex right. things in astronomy. We, we, we are able to do that, but we can say, I mean, numbers of people who attended our session as an observer, some kids. I mean, able to explain about HR diagram. It's wow, quite, really? That's yeah. really good. So how, that, how old are they? They are seven, eight years old. Seven, eight? Okay, yeah. I'll, I'll get my daughters to <laughs> learn that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll try to. We have kindergartens and now we have a lot of, uh, I mean, uh, okay. kids together with us. They have different, in the different platform, not in the Facebook page and uh, they are in the Twitter, in the YouTube and others. So oh, that, that's what I'm okay. like. And I'm like, it's not just about education. Uh, we also provide, um, if you remember, if you notice, we have Apa Nak Beli. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Apa Nak <laughs> I think I that. Yeah, yeah, your website is pretty large. And yeah, I did see yeah, that. Yeah, it is pretty large. We have Apa Nak Beli where we provide uh, telescopes, binocular books, and everything related with space. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So that's how we sustain. And I think, you know, right, we need to sust- we need to pay ourselves, we need to pay our yes. team members, we need to grow, we need to become a company, a big company, uh, sustain. So that's the thing. And I- I'm, I-, I'm, I can say, I mean, that one will be the next question, how I envision up the it for five years from now. I mean, I think they want to be you know, the questions. But yeah, from now, yes. this is how Upper the Langit, we also provide um, event, uh, event organize, uh, we are also event organizers. We organize event for Jakim, if you remember last month, last two months, yeah, last month, we organized Bulan Falak Malaysia. So oh, for the okay. first time, yeah, I think uh, I saw that, yeah. yeah, it's a one month event, it's very tired. Uh, a tireless event where we collaborate with Jakim and all Malaysian uh, Islamic uh, Jabatan Mufti to organize uh, this such uh, national event and it will become a yearly event where every Muharram, every Muharram month will be a, a Malaysian Fala month. So in that month, we will have um, Fala uh, Olympiad now, only for oh, Fala, uh, nice. Fala Olympiad. And okay. we have we have a Mabi where Menteri Agama, the Ministry of uh, Religious for Indonesia, Brunei, Malaysia, and also Singapore. So, I mean, uh, uh, Professor, um, forget his name. Mm. <laughs> It's okay. okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yes, tell me that right. we, we need to make it uh, in, uh, for Mabim. I mean, the Olympiad uh, should be participated by Indonesian and Brunei, Singapore, so, and Malaysia. Indonesia. Yeah. So, in, in essence, like you're creating this uh, basically a whole like company that provides starting from anyone who has interest in space. 
Mm -hmm. you, know, you sell telescopes, you provide uh, guidance for, you know, learning the sky. You can provide uh, curriculums that uh, help, uh, you know, enhance uh, education about space in schools or astronomy and space in schools. Okay. And then uh, you also have people that volunteer to help and everything, right? So it's like a whole, how, how many people do you have in your whole? Okay. Uh, currently we have about 19 19 wow yeah That's about 19 cool. yeah uh and actually it, it will grow permanently next year <laughs> i can see that i, I will ah. tell it there on um okay. it, it gonna get expanding okay yeah. yeah that's very good i i think that uh certainly hope to see uh Appa di Langit expand because i think that no no matter what it's always an inspiration for people to look into space and wonder uh, about, you know, our origins and, uh, you know, what, what's behind everything, you know, the fundamentals. At least we get to touch upon that, you know. And then, you know, okay, of course, there are uh, religion aspects, but there's also the science aspect that's, you know, interesting that we can ask the questions and and i think that why uh maybe an organization that you, you have here this apadilangit is important is because you know i i myself i'm a university educator and my biggest concern right now is the younger generation um first of all there's too much uh you know how you say too much information and very little meaning being put in the information. So a lot of them, they just memorize without knowing why are they learning it. But actually space and astronomy is precisely the knowledge that ties everything together. Science, uh, physics, chemistry, biology, math, everything all combined together becomes, you know, astronomy. And, and I, I think that it's majorly important for, for you know, this uh, organization to, you know, help. I, I think that not just your organization, but uh, anyone in the world, you know, or, you know, to, to, to help tie this together. Yeah. What, what I can say is how I look at astronomy and space, we understand that astronomy is the, our what I can say is multidiscipline knowledge, right? Yes. Where every knowledge can be fit in astronomy. But, yes. The important part as a human is what we can get from astronomy, how it can inspire us, what we can do from the knowledge. If we don't want that astronomy knowledge become just a knowledge which we just know, oh, that's how the sun, uh, I mean, explode, or oh, how the star being born, then it just become a knowledge. But then how it benefits yes. us as a human, how it inspires us to move forward, how what is the challenges that we can, I mean, solve and we, the technology that we can develop from that knowledge for me yes. that's really important we don't want it to become like a text where people just read it and then forget yes. about it it yes. should inspire people to move forward the generation need to understand stars have meaning and how our space uh, develop civilization if yes. they can understand that they can see how space can really benefit human all what we learn, what we develop here for human, for looking at sky and space, yeah, it can give a lot of meanings. It can give you, uh, I mean, uh, uh, understanding about universe. We develop a technology and how we can benefit in terms of economic and in yes. terms of spiritual and everything. It's exactly. It's human that we, yeah. we want to look at. I, I totally agree because, you know, even from ancient times, astronomy has served as the foundations, you know, for basic, like, you look back at all the civilizations, the Mayans, yeah, yeah. the Egyptians, the uh, Khalifa, all the, like, the ancient astronomers, they, they, they developed math, they found it, everything, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, so and, and it's connected, it connects everything. It brings meaning to everything that we learn. Yes. Yeah. And, and the most important part about astronomy is mm -hmm. if we notice, the important part about civilization is time. <laughs> yes. And time yes. is being counted by looking at the stars. That is true. Right. Every yes. civilization looking at the stars, looking at the sun because mm -hmm. of the time. 
So astronomy contributes for the civilization a lot. During that moment, right, they refer to this celestial uh, object to know where to harvest, to know where to to keep food, everything. So it yes, makes yes. civilization grow. So, so those true. who yeah. know about the time sit beside king, right? They can predict yes. future because they know what's going to happen, right? Yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, you're that's right. a big contribution of astronomy. So I, I think yeah. we need to understand that astronomy give a lot of contribution for civilization. But then what happened now? What happened for Malaysia? For us, for me in Upper Langit, we understand that when people come to us, they always ask us, okay, what about Malaysia? We learn about Hubble. We learn about others' uh, advancement in space, astronomy. And how about Malaysia? And then I say, let's do it. Let we do. And we take action. So yes. that's how I think it's important for Malaysia to understand that we are trying to make them understand, okay, Malaysia should participate in space agenda. In even in astronomy or even in space technology, so we should bring this thing. We understand that in 2025, I think before this 2024, the Artemis mission, you can imagine it's about what, how long left, how many years left, about five, three years left, right? Next year will be 2022, yes. so we have 20, three, three years from now. Okay, so what are you imagining for three years from now when we saw people like a woman, I mean, Artemis mission landed on the moon and we started I mean, stay on the moon. So where is Malaysia that we become spectators, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So how yeah. we can make our generation become a future engineers and astronomy can become a gateway for them to yes. interest in space yeah. technology. You can be anything, but as right. long as you right. have interest in space, you can contribute in any ways. So it's a, astronomy is a great gateway to bring kids, students, and everybody into science, technology. Yeah. So that's yeah. how I'm looking at how, that's why I'm pushing myself. We don't want to be left out when people start uh, land the feet on the moon. And now we have our Malaysian Space Exploration Mission 2030. Uh, it's not like what we have previously uh, where, where Dr. Uh, Muzaffar Shuko go uh, to ISS and that one is to show something that we can do but now is to build the ecosystem we should contribute back to the uh, Malaysian and everybody can participate and that nobody should be left out. Yes, yes. Wow, that's a very, very, <laughs> it's a lofty goal but as they always say, aim for the stars and you land on the moon. Yeah, at least yes. you land on the moon, right? Yes, yeah. at least you land on the moon. Mm. So. Yeah, very, very interesting. So, so uh, maybe we can tie this to like, what's your, um, you know, vision and future plans for like uh, Appa di Langit? <laughs> okay, I think, honestly, um, in my heart, um, yes. I want to um, establish Appa di Langit as an institution, space okay. institution, education, space education institution. I was asked by numbers of uh, VIPs, um, all of them in space industry, what do you see up wow. the line? So I uh, tell them, uh, I want to make up the line as institution for space education, either in astronomy or either in space technology. And luckily, we are almost there. Wow. Okay. okay. Uh, we, we get invited to something big. Uh, we're going to send an MOU. Um, that one I still keep it in private. But then um, it, it will be big. It will be big. For me, it will be, I don't know sure how Malaysia will look at it, but then it will be big. Uh, and it, it, for me, it's not just about giving education for Malaysia. Uh, my goal is to help our graduates as well to, to right. fill in the ecosystem where they graduate from the university, even in any, uh, any um, I can say, any field that related to space. They can work with Upper the Langit and provide them a job is something for me is something that I want to do. And That's also growing, cool. <laughs> and also growing uh, the industry as well. Yeah. So do, do you, okay, just out of curiosity then, do you have any plans to like kind of, I, I think 
so so my personal sense is this we need to have like a some way to unify all the entire astronomy community in malaysia like all these clubs organization you know there are all these crazy people who love the stars and everything and uh you know i and they are the astronomy professors as well you know so is there a way do you think or do you have a plan like to unify you know kind of like bring everyone together in in a kind of a united effort to push forward all right okay that's a good question i asked this for i i already asked this uh, for planetarium okay if you notice you know we have like a mathematic literacy right you should know what I mean, standard one should know. Do we have Malaysian astronomy literacy? You know why? Because I why I asked that. When I was in my university, I do a survey for MOSTI, the Ministry of Science. Mm-hmm. And I go uh, from house to house and ask a question about astronomy. I mean, a part of it is astronomy question. How many days a year is the sun uh, revolve around the moon or moon around the sun? And I have a lot <laughs> of wrong answers. <laughs> wow, okay. Yeah. So I can uh-huh. say how actually, I mean, don't ask about science literacy. It'll be a big one. Don't ask about nanotechnology. Don't ask about deep tech. But ask about astronomy, something that you can see every day. <laughs> so I'm saying, okay, right, right. The sun rise from south or some east. Or, and oh, then also yeah. they got wrong. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah actually true. Yeah. So we don't true. have that thing. If we, right. we can see it, because every, every I mean, societies, clubs have their own mission. It's a noble mission because we can do everything. We can't do everything. So let them do what they want to do. But then we sit together as the Malaysia have a national uh, outreach coordination, uh, coordinators. Okay, Abu Lang is a part of it. Uh, and uh, with uh, Planetary Negara as uh, chairman, and we have a number of institutions. So Abu Lang uh, sit under a uh, name of Universal Awareness as a big NGO under that right. nation. So we sit together, but then we haven't yet have a next meeting. The first meeting have uh, done, uh, I think, last three months. Okay. Previously, we have one, but then the COVID-19 held everything. Um, we should have like, uh, okay, what is our uh, astronomy literacy? I you have a book. Okay, I have a book. So if we just look at, we can look at it. So we can know, okay. Currently, this we, what we should focus on. Maybe make sure people know, understand about eclipse at least, right? So because a lot of rumors goes around until today. Now we, when we have right. a technology and WhatsApp, we still get all the hoaxes, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if, if it happens even in developed nation, we know yes. that it's actually a problem <laughs> that is kind of universal. So, yeah, I, I, but, I mean, okay, you sorry, go I, on. Yes. That's the best <laughs> part. The best part is when the hoax has happened, we as right. a communicator need to sit together and think. Now we have the knowledge. Does we convey the message correctly? Do yeah. we have a pedagogy on that? Or we just simply throw out what we know and that we expect people to understand? Because yeah, we have a certain yeah. understanding for this one. I mean, we can speak and to the public at the same understanding that we have. I mean, same level of us, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why IAU came up with the communication for public. So we uh, discussed about how to convey this message to public. We haven't yet done here in Malaysia. I mean, we do it how we want to do. We didn't analyze. We didn't go and I mean go and understand. Right. Okay, is our message uh, received correctly? Uh, do they really understand? Or we or we just uh, talk to people that really want to hear about it. Do we really do a real outreach? Yeah, you know, yeah <laughs> I, I know what you're getting at. In a way, that's very true because, you know, there's always the, the yeah, that, that, that crazy part of us, you know, that we just, yeah. oh, we're so passionate about it. Look, that's serious. That's Orion. What? You don't know serious? You don't know Orion? I mean, yeah. it's up there. It's like, we don't even know what that is. You know, it's like, is that a star? Is it, uh, or is it a planet? Or, so, or what? Uh, is that a satellite or airplane? That looks like an airplane, <laughs> you know? And, and yeah, so, so uh, th- this connect is there. And, and yes, yeah, so, but is that kind of like part of your plan to kind of like, uh, you know, bring all the societies together? Because uh, may- maybe, I mean, we certainly could use some kind of, a, 
may, maybe uh, education in terms of like you know shared knowledge to like how we communicate to the community because I think every every one of the societies we want to do outreach as well, right? And and, and yeah. I think that uh, the, the but the the, the and and yes, I, I agree with you that uh, even even myself sometimes I catch myself like running my mouth off and then people are like. Oh, 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 thank you. And then, <laughs> you know, from my experience, I normally tell my team, okay, you take one photos and bring to the public, show to the public a photo of full of stars. Okay, show to the public what you think public will think about the photos. Okay, then you maybe just look at it. Oh, these are all stars. And then they go yeah, out. Yeah. I mean, how yeah. we as a communicator hook them? How? Yeah, what is yeah. the mechanism to hook them? That's part of it, uh, pedagogical part. We can talk everything from uh, space, from telescope, from the focal length to every, I mean, settings, yes, right? Yes. We can love about it. But then when you go back to the society, society doesn't bother about it. They don't care, okay? But what they care is about, okay, how I can feel my uh, my, my stomach and uh, mm. the, all the things that I should know will help me in the future. So, yeah. from our perspective, this space should inspire people, right? Yeah. So, that's why a, a part of our task in, in Padangit, we also have like a motivation from Sky. It's a project where we previously went to a room, a room a, those who, I mean, in the rehab of our drug addiction. So, yeah, it's totally, I mean, challenge. We tried to go to the prisons and... Just want to share with the, I mean, people there. Okay, we have a future. Just look at the sky bigger than you. I mean, we talk about something human, because human can relate something with sky actually. But don't yes. put signs too much. We need to relate back mm. to their emotion, to your feelings, yeah. to their understanding. That and that's how it should be. If you yeah, do yeah. focus on the scientific, scientific, uh, scientific part. And we can, I mean, as what you said just now, we are crazy to tell everything. Oh, this one yes. is psycho. This one is Copernicus. They don't bother about it. They want to yes. know what that thing about for me. Right? Yeah, for I us see. as a communicator, they need to think, oh, what will connect them with it? Maybe yes. the, at the end of the day, they will appreciate something from the conversation. Even a small, small thing. That is human part. That is right. a clue. Why people keep coming to you because of that. That's a very interesting. That's a very interesting point, and I think that it is very important because, you know, no matter what, we are indeed trying to spread astronomy, and uh, you know, if we, it, it's, it's like, you know, bouncing a ball off the wall. You know, yeah. Uh, you, you want to get it to stick on the wall, but you know, it's <laughs> not right. So, and so how many it grows? Yeah. Yes. So, so then, doctor, right? How we measure our our, our outreach grows? And then that's how we came up with the community. So we can handhold them. Okay, once you are interested to astronomy, so what next? What next? What next? We don't want them to, I mean, after they get interested and then they feel like, oh, nobody wants to guide us. Oh, they don't know where right, to Right, right. I think that's, to. that's a big concern too, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, there, there's... There are some sometimes there are issues like oh, okay uh, one one person says oh you need this no 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 you need that and then you know, <laughs> like uh, I don't need yeah <laughs> and then but that's okay that's okay, that's okay. Yeah. we can we can we appreciate every teachers all the yes. seafoods that we have we appreciate everybody yes yes I I yeah. think yeah that's that's true I mean it's just that uh, we we do I think that we we can use some you know um, understanding in how to really communicate. What yeah. we would like them to learn, like how to put put it forth, like in a more um, in a manner that people can understand, can accept better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think space should motivate people. When we talk about soon, we're gonna have like a James Webb telescope, right? With all yes. the advanced technology inside the telescope, how we can inspire our generation to look at the technology itself, to make them believe that we can do it if you want to. I mean, yeah. they can do if you want to. I mean, don't tell that, I mean, okay, this one is very high tech and then there's a stock, oh, this one is only for those who really 
techy or those who are really intelligent. Yeah, actually, do. that's yeah, yeah, that's so true. Yeah, yeah. It's like oh, this one is like ah, uh, so hard, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. So thanks. it's our job right, as a communicator <laughs> yeah. to make yeah. them believe to themselves that we can do, yeah, yeah. and it's a it's a nation building things. Astronomy should inspire that because before this, astronomy already inspired the whole civilization. Yes, yes. Yeah, how Aristotle does that? How Plato yeah. does that? Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. So so I think that that will count as one big challenge and hurdle, right? That we want to kind of, you know, try to do the astronomy communication. So what, what are the challenges do you see, like, for your, I mean, at least for your goal, you know, for your Apadilangit, uh, how to, I mean, make it, bigger and the institution but uh, what are the challenges uh -huh. you face? yeah i think it's when we, when i personally built up the langit and together now with hazim and in my team we are really a passionate astronomer amateur astronomers human is still human we still need to learn how to manage a company we need yeah. to learn how to be a good leader all mm -hmm. the things that make us human i mean it's not just about astronomy. If I want to become a speaker in astronomy, I can just focus on myself and my knowledge. But then if I want to build a company, if I want to build all this, I need to get the all things, the finance, the people that are under me and the group, how to keep them motivated and how to cope with the challenges. I mean, all the fluidity, the working things. And for me, leadership is the important part. Um, yeah, we do have a lot of speakers in Malaysia. Uh, yes. Honestly, I can say how we as an astronomer in Malaysia look for a leader in astronomy. In space mm. leadership, uh, we know currently global space leadership, maybe at week everybody are looking at Elon Musk, right? Right, okay. Elon Musk. Yeah, Elon. because he's some, somebody that being inspired people, doing something great, something like that. Okay, right. how, we can, how we look at astronomy? Do we have somebody that we can inspire? I mean, you just mentioned num nuts, a few of names that we have Bill Nile, Neil Degrees, right? Yeah. Those are the great communicators. How we can, I mean, recreate those people here in Malaysia? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the thing that, I mean, astronomy leaders that can speak to the heart of the people. I mean, yes. yeah, that's the thing that we, we should think about and what kind of people that we want to create and for me all the challenges yeah it's up and down i can tell you a lot i have if in five years things <laughs> it's five years experience it right. takes all the sacrifice i mean cries anger all, all emotion blood um, sweat blow and tears right <laughs> yeah and tears yeah, sometimes I, I honestly I, I have a feeling that okay I need to stop. I'm stretched mm. myself a lot because I'm not just sitting and focused on up the langit. I have other company as well. I'm also working right. for the space in the, the we have a spin off yeah. company with USM for this nano satellite building for the one for CubeSat. And um yeah, it's a it is a long journey, but I believe it's my dream. Uh, I think because I have a dream, I will be bestowed with a dream. And I believe that when God give you that dream, mean that you can do it. And sometimes I ask myself, why God give me this kind of dream? I, one day, I want to, I think, uh, I want to, I mean, uh, I want to grant uh, like kind of resources for our researchers to do research. Uh, yeah, yeah. That, wow. That's what I'm thinking, and I should have a lot of money to to do that. And then I want to hire a lot of astronomers uh, for my company, and we want to make it different. I mean, I know all the institution they have their own role to educate with the proper. But then we are in the different era where, yes. like, uh, disruptive, where we people want to see it uh, in a different media, all those stuff. I mean, the approach will be different. And yes. even USD are changing their approaches, right? Yes. So that's why I'm looking at, um, yeah, it's a long journey. But for me, 
even if I was, I will be alone again. I mean, I will, I will keep moving forward for that. I mean, you who knows, up, during the journey up and down, people come in and out, right? Okay, I I learn a lot from that. I mean, I I I like to read uh, about uh, biography, successful biography people. So yeah, to to achieve something, sometimes you will face something like unexpected. It's not like a nice story. To be prepared is one thing, but as long as I have my blueprint, nobody can take from me. Yes. Yeah, and my concern is time. Same like I said in the beginning, when astronomy talk about time, I'm not sure how long I will live, right? But I need to find my legacy. I mean, who will hold my legacy? So the dream will be continued. But I believe that uh, we can achieve something. Malaysia can achieve something. We can do something good for astronomy and space. And 2030 is not uh, far away, just around the yeah. corner. Seven years. Eight, seven, eight years, yeah. Yeah, seven, eight years. You can imagine time runs too fast. And we already have a plan for a year for next year. So, <laughs> yeah, we already have a plan for a year and it's full for every week. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So that one is now haven't yet been fit in with other projects. Um, yeah, I, I okay. can see. I, I don't know how I can, I can work that time. But surely I, I will be happy if I can see the upper langit grow when I have more team with um, more other races as well. It's not just about me. Yes. I, I, we, we want to be international and, and our future project for Asian actually. So we want to collaborate with others and we work internationally. That's how we want to position ourselves. And for me, it's not about one Hafiz. I want to create more Hafiz. I mean, with other names, okay, to bring the dreams, to bring the, I mean, aspiration, about how we can make um, Malaysian uh, space, astronomy and technology uh, move forward. Yeah. Wow. So, that's a lot. <laughs> Again, it's, uh, it's a very, it's a very honorable goal in my view. And I it make me, I can't sleep because of it. <laughs> really? Wow. Okay. I certainly hope, I mean, I, I'm, I certainly hope you do achieve it because I mean, I can, I, I think that all of the listeners here can see your passion and your fire to want to do this you know i mean it's 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 actually coming across you know like at the speed of light through the communication systems and <laughs> <laughs> speed of the switching and then i can see it you know i can see it uh i i, I, I personally have been i mean numbers of people are come to me face and say hafiz you can't do it and i and and some people say hafiz you can make money from astronomy that's actually kind of yeah like, uh, yeah those who i hope those who i hope support me right. those who i believe i mean will i mean provide me i mean uh motivation mm -hmm. but then come and say that to me and i mean say happy stop you need to do something else yeah um for me it's something that i disappointed because I'm looking at people that I admire. But then um, I take it as something that I need to prove for myself. That uh, astronomy is not just about telling people, okay, how beautiful our space is, our sky is. But it's more than that. How from the space and from astronomy, I can provide, I mean, living from others. For yes. the team, they want to I mean, grow as well. Yeah, how we can grow for leadership and go back to the nation. So, yeah, I go through like what we said, happy cheers and everything. Yes. <sighs> it is Please continue your journey. I, I think yeah. that, uh, you know, and, and when I saw Appa di Langit, I'll just, I'll, I'll be honest. I mean, I'm like, I was actually fascinated. I say that, you know, uh, here is a 
young person who is willing to do to put to dedicate his their lives okay to the pursuit of astronomical awareness among the public right and uh, I mean I mean I grew up in an older generation where you know this kind of thinking would as you said you know people would say uh, you know uh, it's a pipe dream <laughs> that's what they call it but uh, you know now looking at you know the the, the fire and the passion and the drive and I, th I don't think that it is impossible anymore because how the world has changed especially with how technology is moving and uh you know how it can be used to push forward this kind of agenda and the benefits that people are more and more being aware of you know like uh, and even if I, I tell my students you know as well you know um space is something you know astronomy and space is actually a kind of like the crossroad of all knowledge and uh, you know if they're not interested that's fine but then just find a day go up under a dark sky you know and then just look up at the stars and no matter what you feel whether it's a scientific sciencey feel or artsy feel or whatever emotion you feel that is probably who you are because you are just surrounded by that vast cosmos it's just the cosmos and you and that's you, right? There's no one else around you to tell you what to be, who you are, what you should do, what you should not do. It's just you and space. And you talk like a Carl Sagan. <laughs> <laughs> I love Carl Sagan. Yeah, He's, me too. Uh, my total inspiration. Yeah, I mean, the concept of cosmos, we need to discuss about it because it seldom been discussed properly here in Malaysia. I mean, that's yeah. what you told us just now that space, what we saw is space that we understand. When we talk about cosmos, it's much more bigger than that, right? Yes. Because we are just one speck in the space, like a dust. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So everything that we have, even what on Earth, actually related to space. Yes. <laughs> it's we're how we look all, at it. We're all star stuff. And, and, and one of the most profound thing that I think Carl Sagan says is, you and I, and every single one of us on Earth, we are the universe actually just evolving to understand the universe itself. It's like, it's crazy. Yeah. Like, when did this yeah. happen? It's so amazing. And, yeah, and that's true. Yeah, it's the true miracle that we should believe in because it is real. It is you. I think this is a good thing. We, I mean, I've been in numbers of uh, seminars. I mean, uh, kind of this kind of deep think a thought about yeah. people who, I mean, philosophers. I mean, why don't we have a kind of talk about, okay, let go and like, I mean, go into what Carl Sagan mean about this one and discuss about it. I mean, go yeah. deep about ourselves, think about it, cosmos and get inspired about it. And then the next thing, what is uh, action that we need to do is to inspire others after that. I mean, yes. from the understanding. So people can understand, okay, we are not alone here, not because of alone, lonely, but because of we are part of the universe. Everything evolve and change. Actually, we are the universe. <laughs> yeah, we are yeah. the universe. Yeah. And that's the name, right? So Yeah. Um, so um yeah. Is is there any uh, like so um, are there, is there any uh, parting thoughts that uh, you would like to share with uh, the audience yeah. here at all? Uh, you know, since we've kind of come to the end of the, the, the questions, uh, I, I actually have one more question for you, but uh, 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 all right, I'll ask it. What's your favorite yeah. type of telescope? Just kind of like put some fun <laughs> <laughs> What a favorite type of telescope. All right, okay, yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, currently I have I have Max Lutov. I mean, currently oh, uh, 127, yeah. all right? Oh, so, right, right. Yeah, that's what I have right now. So maybe I guess I watch United, ED maybe, or I mean, the, for the, for the uh, that one maybe for, uh, because it's a fractal, right? So what I have here is Max Lutov. Um, My dream is not oh. one telescope. 
Oh yeah, yeah. No, yeah. no, you, you can't have one telescope. Yeah, but up the langit. It's for up the langit. What I plan is to have uh, observation or uh, observatory of up the langit. We've planned oh. for numbers observatory for up oh. the langit. So the project stops last year. So I hope we can revive it again. Uh, we should. We we are trying our best to have numbers of observatory for up the langit. I mean, certain, uh, we have numbers of location that we so, already. So, what what telescope you'd imagine be in the observatory? C eleven, C fourteen. It depends on budget. It depends on budget. Because it depends. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah. So yeah, it, 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 it differs. Man, we right. we want to have like a, a robotic telescope. So, yeah. Uh, that's why it, it's good to to dream big, right? Yeah, it's yeah. good to dream big. That's why I need to be a successful businessman and a successful entrepreneur, so I can have the best one, right? Okay. Uh, so I need, Thanks. I no need to rely on the grant or others. That's why I strive and I push myself in this, uh, in this, in entrepreneurship. Yeah. So it's not just about to bait our my team, but to provide emulation for this thing that we are waiting from the government before. So it should be a public thing that yeah. we can share. Uh, that 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 my dream. I mean, if uh, I hope I can see my dream come true. <laughs> yes, I certainly hope so. So, uh, you have any like uh, parting words of advice or something maybe that you like to share? I think a lot of things that I learned from astronomy. Um, it's not just about space. It's not just about sky. At the end of the day, it's about people. Because as a communicator. Uh, we learn about people more than the sky. Yes. How to deal with them? Because if not, we just and become like uh, uh, things in the oh, like a robotic say. robotic display teleprompter, right? Yeah, what is this? something Press like that. Button. Yeah, okay, the planet. Yeah, not uh... that kind of thing. <laughs> something. I'm yes. I'm happy to see people get inspired from space and they become someone. Because I think that's how I am when I inspired by time and space, and I can see how big is the universe, and what we can achieve. Because God given us a nice, I mean, a brain that we can use. Uh, so that's our part. How to inspire people? I mean, we have a project for those for B forty people. I mean, we met kids from that area who don't have ambition. They don't know what to do. And they're surprised when we tell them, okay, there's a future in front of them. We show them the, I mean, the SpaceX uh, advancement, the rocket, and they feel that, wow, they can be someone. And yes. some, somebody should do that. So I, I think the most important part from the astronomy thing is not just telling about the astronomical knowledge, but to make human human again. Yeah, I mean, we become a robot before. I mean, yeah, human human again. I mean, yeah, human create civilization, right? We understand. We should understand. Uh, I mean, the universe, how to utilize it and benefit us. We talk about astronomy actually more than that. We we not yet talk about the SDG part, <laughs> right? And the climate change part, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's quite a big thing. Yes. Uh, even uh, even for the sustainable development goals in the United Nations, how does astronomy play a role there? I mean, yes, for me, we we in IAU discuss of it, but we haven't yet bring it here in Malaysia. I hope one day I can do this. I mean, it's quite a comprehensive movement how the astronomy can help sustain I mean quality education partnership development uh, natural resources and all this stuff how we can coordinate this thing together that's how it goes back to your question just now why we should unify all this community it's not just about to doing things because of the phenomena but we should have a clear goal about the literacy how to make sure the uh, sustainable goals happen. Because at the end of the day, 
we have a lot of things out there. We not just about astronomy. We have now this nanotechnology. We have, I mean, biology, and we are the multidiscipline uh, knowledge. We can attach with any other <laughs> knowledge. So True. we should play our role. So. Yeah. Thank you very much, Hafiz. Uh, you inspired a dream for me. And that dream is maybe in about two years, three years, or even maybe even earlier. I would like to interview you again <laughs> as a major space entrepreneur of Malaysia. Okay? All right. So, meaning that you have achieved it. <laughs> Malaysian Elon Musk. So thank you very much again for your time from uh, the busy schedule. Okay. And uh, for all the audiences, uh, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, what an inspirational talk. Uh, Hafiz, thank you. I actually, I really did learn a lot from you listening to this talk and uh, I'm very inspired. You know, I you can you. feel your passion. Yes. So, uh, and so, for the audience too, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel, our Facebook page, visit astronomicalsocietyofpenang.com. Uh, and again, I do have that uh, uh, night sky photography workshop using the SLRs and mirrorless cameras. Uh, come in if you would like to try to inspire people with your photographs. Um, thank you very much and have a good evening or good day ahead. Thank you, everyone.